The 3-in-1 Smart Car and IoT Learning Kit from SunFounder is a hands-on, all-included electronics kit that is perfect for anyone who wants to learn how to master the Arduino. The kit comes with an Arduino, 22 different sensors and modules, breadboards, jumper wires, and everything else you need to build a bunch of fun and interesting projects. Learn about robotics by building a remote-controlled smart car that can be controlled with an infrared remote controller. Or drive on its own and avoid obstacles or fall on a line. Learn about the Internet of Things with a project that lets you monitor the temperature, humidity, and light level of a room from an app on your smartphone. And build a plant monitor that tracks the temperature, humidity, light intensity, and soil moisture displays it on your smartphone so you can keep your plants watered remotely. It's a super cool kit and I had lots of fun building all the projects in it. So click the link in the description below to order the kit from SunFounder. In this video, I'd like to show you some tools that will come in handy when you're building electronics projects. We'll also take a look at some of the different kinds of Arduino boards you can get. The Arduino Nano is the smallest and best for projects where size or weight is a concern. The Arduino Mega is the largest and has more pins and features than the other types. There are lots of others and each has its own pros and cons. So check out the arduino.cc website to find the best one for your project. But if you're just starting out, I'd recommend the Arduino Uno. This is an Arduino Uno. It's the easiest to use, and it's also the most well-documented Arduino. It's pretty much the standard Arduino. I'll be using an Arduino Uno in this course. But if you have a Mega or a Nano, the programming and wiring will still work. One of the things you'll use the most in this course is a solderless breadboard. Breadboards make it possible to build circuits without soldering. You can insert components into the board and connect them to the Arduino with jumper wires. Breadboards come in a few different sizes. This is a full-size breadboard. This is a half-size one. And this is a mini one. Inside, there are little strips of metal that connect the pins together. In this breadboard, there are two sets of rows separated by a gap. Each pin in a row is electrically connected to the other pins in the row. To connect two components to each other, you just insert one side of each component into the same row, like this. So these two resistors are connected in series. The outer columns of the pins are the power rails. Power rails are used to supply power to other parts of the board. All you need to do is connect one positive wire and one ground wire to each column, and you can take power from any of these pins. It's really useful for circuits that need multiple power or ground connections. The two sets of power rails aren't connected to each other, but if you need both sides, you can connect them with jumper wires. Now you have two sets of power rails. The gap in the middle of the board is sized perfectly for IC chips. To make longer connections on the breadboard, or to connect circuits to the Arduino, we use jumper wires. Jumper wires come in a variety of lengths and colors. Some have pins attached to the ends, and some are just wires with the insulation stripped off the end. The most common kind have male pins on both sides. But some have male and female pins. And there are also ribbon cables. Ribbon cables are really useful for connecting components that have a lot of pins. At some point, you'll probably need a soldering iron. Soldering irons come in different wattages, but a good wattage for small electronics would be around 30 to 60 watts. I won't be going over how to solder much in this course, but just watch a few videos online 
then practice with some scrap wire and a perf board. A lot of modules and sensors come without the pin header soldered on, so you need to solder it on yourself. Next you'll want a good selection of resistors and capacitors. A selection of resistors from 100 ohms up to 100 kilo ohms should be enough for most projects. For capacitors, you'll want to range from about 470 picofarads up to a couple thousand microfarads. LEDs are another really useful thing to have. They're great for troubleshooting and can tell you if part of a circuit is getting power. An assortment of colors is helpful. This is an LCD display. These are great for displaying sensor readings. This one is a 16 by 2 character LCD. But they also come in a larger 20 by 4 size. Buttons and switches are really good to have too. Push buttons are switches that let current flow when they're pressed. They're good for controlling things like LEDs, motors, or relays. Potentiometers change their resistance when you turn the knob. They're available in different sizes and resistance values. 10 kilo ohm, 100 kilo ohm, and 250 kilo ohm are probably the most common. There are tons of different sensors that you can use with the Arduino. Here's a temperature and humidity sensor. This is an ultrasonic distance sensor. This is a GPS module. And this is a barometric pressure sensor. I'm going to show you how to use all these sensors in this course, plus a bunch of other ones. There are also some really good kits that have most of these parts. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to connect your Arduino to your computer and how to install the Arduino IDE. We'll also take a look at our first Arduino program. SunFounder is my go-to source for sensors, modules, and other parts for the Arduino and Raspberry Pi. They have a huge selection of STEM, robotics, and IoT kits, and lots of useful sensors and modules. Every product has an online tutorial with wiring diagrams and example code. They also offer free shipping on all orders, with no minimum. Give them a try at www.sunfounder.com next time you need to order some parts.